so this is the Versa Tuner too. It's the 940. Oh, this is the 949F. I thought I ordered the 949E. I'm a big dummy. No that argument. must be uh, what a dummy. That that's why <laughs> I got it so cheap. Because when I saw this, I was like, "What? I can't believe that's the price on that thing." And it's because it doesn't go letter. all the way up. Uh, it and do it does six. have the smaller capacitors in it. It doesn't go to six. Yeah, it's also what you capacitors. were saying, Nate. Yeah, it doesn't go to six. Okay, so it's the F. I could have swore I bought the E. Oh, well. Um, I'll live. But this one's got a lot more features in it. So let's, let's take a look at it. Um, one is it has an SWR power meter, which is awesome. So Chuck was talking mm -hmm. about how his has one. So, so much in the easier. diagram that we looked at, you, you could use this uh, for tuning, and you don't necessarily need another component along your Yeah, that's, and transmission that's a cool line. feature of a lot of tuners. Looking to bring your electronic project to life? Check out PCBWay.com, your one-stop destination for all your PCB needs. With PCBWay, you'll get top-quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services at an unbeatable price. Experience lightning-fast turnaround times and reliable global shipping. From prototypes to production, PCBWay.com is your trusted partner every step of the way. It has a lamp, so you can turn this on or off if you if you want, but you don't need to have the lamp on. You don't need any electricity in this thing in order to use it. Um, it has settings sure? for, th yeah, it has settings for 30 and 300 watts. Um, here's the antenna selector, which is really cool. So you can go between uh, your balanced wire, your balance line or your wire, um, coax one, coax two. But all the way down here, you see it's got a dummy load. So you can actually transmit into a dummy load if you wanted to do. That's already down. If you wanted to do some some testing. And then here you can switch between peak and averaging. So when you use something like single sideband, your power bounces up and down depending upon the amount of modulation that the radio is transmitting based off of the vo your voice. So some people want to see what the peaks are. So what, what your max output is. Some people like to look at averaging. I, I like to I like to look at averaging. So we looked at the antenna selector. So here on the back, just like the diagram that we looked at, you see a bunch of stuff. So he here's the plug for the meter lamp, 12 volt DC. But the only thing that this does is turn that light on and off. You don't you don't need to use it. Here's the ground. The meter, I don't think the meter works unless you do that, though. No, it works. It worked. Um, <laughs> this is the this is the ground lug, and then um, if you were going to use balance line, you would use these two. What do you call them? Binding post adapters. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you're going to use this a single wire, which used to be really common, I don't, I don't know anybody who just sticks a wire on the back of these things, then you do need to install a jumper between these two. They've changed those. Yeah, transmitter and then the coax for the two different uh, two different mm -hmm. antennas. Um, Chuck, why don't you, you want to take Ken's question? Well, Ken, um, I think if you're going to run, they both work, I think, for me personally, I trust a manual tuner if I'm running power more than I trust an automatic tuner. That's just me. It's, it's something in my head. But, um, and then like Gabe said, sometimes they're, they're a little more, they can do a wider range of tuning or matching, however you well, want to say it. Probably the biggest thing, though, is, is that if you run a manual antenna tuner, you can act like you're better than hams who don't, right? Isn't That's that right. the word <laughs> see they've they've cheapened up on those because the old ones had the nice um let me show you the back of mine can you hit me real quick there yeah i got you and i don't know if it's but see see the bind the binding post on yeah, this are nice. not really binding posts but they're oh those are those that's what they used to use ghetto than what's on apes yeah so they've they've changed that this is an older one this one's about five six what years show old. the front of that biznatch And that's a now much is, nicer tuner. What is that tuner, Chuck? Ninety. It's a, a nine six two D. That looks it, very pretty. It says one point five kilowatts. Never trust what MFJ says on that. This was actually made for their four tube, the one that uh, the what four eleven nine eleven eight eleven eight eleven. It's made for that. It's made for their four tube. You know, handle eight hundred watts. And I bought it because I have a. I think it was the smallest one I could go with for me for portable because I have a I feel like a 500 watt amp that I can take, and that's why I bought it. I took it. I actually bought it when I went to Chicago one time. 
And it Dan, delivered the, better. the reason that you tune at lower power is so that if things are sideways, you don't immediately destroy your radio. That's, yeah, I would tune less than that. I would tune at maybe five to ten watts. Well, I you move your way up. I agree with you, except a lot of automatic tuners won't engage unless you're at twenty. So you need it. It, it depends. If you're doing a manual tuner, like we're showing here. Absolutely, mm -hmm. five or ten watts would be fine, but a lot of automatic tuners, um, the LDG and and the MFJ auto tuners require like twenty watts to engage. That's that's the problem I found out with the seven hundred five with that that hundred watt one I bought from you, Jim. It doesn't like, it doesn't it, really the, like. Yeah, the power is so watts. low. Yeah, it wants twenty, I think. Yep, it does, and it says that in the manual. I think that you what it what won't you do really is do its dingus until you hit twenty. You want to eventually you want to eventually get to whatever power you're running and tune at that, but work you can work your way there. Yeah, because it will change. You, you'll watch it, and as you go up, you can more you can tune it a little bit finer for the higher power. If you're going to run, you say you're going to run two hundred watts, work your way up to two hundred watts and tune it to there eventually. But work, but like. Ape said, "Kind of work your way up a little bit in stages. And once you get it, once you get it at the lower wattage, it'll be pretty close to everywhere else." Right. Yeah, it's typically not going to change a whole lot. It it will, but not generally a bunch. And then you got to change your meter too. So make sure you change your meter, or you think something's wrong. Right. All right. So let's talk about the guts a little bit. This is our dummy load. That, oh, that's uh, the dummy talking, load. Okay. I was talking about, this is the same thing, the four to one ballon that we were talking about earlier. So this piece of connector here, this SO239 is the, uh, is for the transmitter. And then you can see down here at the bottom, there's a little teeny toroid. Let me lift this up so you can see it. And that's the SWR bridge, that toroid. And then these components right here above it. Um, or how you would how you would measure your SWR, and that goes into here into the SWR power meter. Now, or just like the other tuner, this comes out. It goes through it, the other tuner didn't have an SWR bridge, but it goes into this SWR bridge, and then you can follow the traces, and it comes out and it goes into this side of the capacitor, and then you can see I adjust the capacitor with this knob here, and let's see if this has the same condition. So this is fully open. And just like Hollywood was saying, it is 110, so fully meshed would be at zero, um, like he was saying. And yep. it the 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 other side of the capacitor has this wire that goes right over into the other capacitor, forming the top of the T. And this wire comes over here. It looks like it goes into the coil, but it's above the coil, and it comes down and goes back into the board. And then would go to your your various antennas. Now this one's got this really long the rotary knob on here. It's got this really long shaft on it, and um, that is for your antenna selector. If you wanted to turn that, this rotary knob here is for adjusting the taps on your fixed inductor. And so what's crazy is this one has this big coil on it, but it's got this little small coil over here. And so for the least amount of inductance, this the setting right here on the butt on the knob and it goes right into the center of this little one so you'd only get this little itty bitty bit mm. of inductance now the more i turn this knob this direction the more and more inductance it adds as it goes goes so, down down the coil yeah right? so these would be the top of the t right here and then this connect this connection coming in is our path to ground or the bottom part of the t so let me flip it around the t goes like this and like that and that yep. would be that that would be your T. So that, that goes knob, on there. On that knob, as you add inductance, you're moving down that coil from top to bottom. Right? Correct. So, yeah, okay. And then Correct. I might um, point out that it's it's uh, grounded in, into the frame down and there's also into the box. Yeah. Yeah, just bottom. like the, just like that right here. On either yep. on either side. Um we had some questions about the dummy load. Can you hold that end up and show that dummy load? Dan was wanting to know what that was rated for. I assume 300 watts since that's what it says on the front of the tuner. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at the instructions, but it's it's rated at different wattages for different durations, right? So it's like you get mm -hmm. 10, and I'm just speculating here, right? So don't don't take it as gospel. So let's just say you get 10 seconds at 100 watts. You might get 20 seconds at 50 and right. then 30 seconds at 25 or something those like are, that. Those are tiny little capacitors in that thing. 
Yeah, you know, when I opened it up, um, I was like, what the F? Look how little these capacitors are. And I think supposed because to be I was looking at a picture. Watts. I was looking at a picture of the of the E, not the F. And um Oh. I think my <laughs> I little I think my little Heath kid has bigger ones than that. So you you think you got F'd is what you're saying? Well, I mean, it's just a different tuner than what I expected. But either way, this is fine. The, the, the main reason I got this tuner is, one, I want to learn more about, and I want to use manual int antenna tuners more. Uh, I want to do more videos like this, showing people the, you know, how they work and seeing them in action. You know, I, th is this the only tuner I'm going to ever own for the rest of my life? Absolutely not. You, you know what I mean? It, to me, it, it doesn't matter too much. It was a toy, and I got it at a good price, and I'm going to have some fun with it. And whether I keep it or not, it's a whole right. other thing. Now, what are those blue components left of the long shaft? Are those dip switches or? Um, let's take a look I, at them. I, th I can't tell what those are from here. Well, they, they are adjustable. And I do know that there's a calibration procedure that you can do for, to the, um, oh, for the SWR meter. meter. Okay. But, but okay. if you take a look at it, the SWR meter does have these calibration things in here. So there's little teeny adjustment points in there that you mm -hmm. can adjust. I believe that's for adjusting that. I'm not 100% sure what these um actually do let's see if there's any markings on that hmm. so they look like they're very old resistors yeah same meters that that is in my uh al80b looks like now you can pretty, say a lot of things close. about mfj but i will tell you that their boards are at least marked with part numbers and you yeah. can discern a whole lot of information just from the markings on the part well like if you look at all those solder points they right. don't look bad. I I I seen I've seen worse soldering on certain antennas. <laughs> yeah. So you know when you say 250 bucks for this, this doesn't look like two hundred and fifty dollars worth of parts. But I don't think it's a bad deal for this particular antenna tuner. And and I gotta say that I'm thankful that companies like MFJ put stuff out like this that's affordable and they, given the simplicity of the configuration. Mm -hmm. Like Hollywood was saying that people can work on this kind of stuff and change it out and, and do their um, their own things with them. So I, I think they're, it's I, I, I'm a huge fan of MFJ of MFJ, to be honest with you. I've, so, I've used mine quite a bit. And I, I like it. Mine works really Josh good. Josh is saying those may be for calibrating the meter, the hold circuit and the averaging adjust for the meter. It 100 percent. It 100 percent could be. I'd, I'd have to go back. Yeah, and, uh, usually you don't mess with them anyhow. But yeah, you'd have well, to read a manual, and that, you, that well, you'd also have happen. to have so, some really I mean, just saying high high dollar equipment to probably improve them at all. Well, and like Hollywood says, that's where you magic screwdriver goes, right? Mm -hmm. The golden screwdriver. The gold screwdriver, right? Right. In your CB. And Jesse, I've, I'm with I've you. Used to... They're making that coil and solder in the boards. Hell yeah, take my money. I'm not going to do it. Now, you can buy this in a kit also. Is this the one you can buy in a kit, Abe? Now, see, that would be kind of fun to do it, though, i got to say. I, I, I repaired I one one time. I, have, I know they have a kit, but I don't know if it's the let me, let me look that up while you guys are talking. And That would be like a fun project if you're looking for something and you're in you. And, and I think the coil comes tapped <clears throat> in that kit. I'm not sure. I think yeah, it's already, got a few minutes. I think so you may have to solder it to the switch. Huh. Yes, they do. 